Who really wrote the first Welsh dictionary? This is the Reverend Canon Daniel Sylvan Evans. He is the scholar who is most often credited with writing the first Welsh dictionaries. He was born in 1818 at a farm called Bron Willem Echav in Llanarth in Cardiganshire. He's said to have been descended from the great medieval king of Gwynedd, Rhodri Mawr, through his mother's ancestors, though his mother worked as a stocking knitter and his father as a laborer. But Daniel Sylvan Evans was able to attend college and went on to become an Anglican clergyman, a linguist, a professor, folklorist, and antiquarian. The dictionary published under his name was begun in the 1880s, with a volume on words starting in the letter A coming out in 1887. And then new volumes came out for subsequent letters up to the letter E, which was completed before his passing in 1903. He also published many other books on Welsh folklore and culture, in addition to being the editor of a number of scholarly journals. When we think about people like Daniel Sylvan Evans, prominent scholars in the past, we often have this image of him alone in his library, a sanctuary separate from the outside world, surrounded by leather-bound books, sat in a leather armchair, thinking big thoughts and spending his days writing them down. The Gentlewoman magazine in 1901 described Daniel Sylvan Evans' work in almost this exact same way. Welsh clergymen labor very frequently in solitude and far away from the notice of the busy world. But here's the question. What makes this kind of solitary scholarly life possible? If you ask any scholar, writer, or anyone who does creative work today, they'll tell you that the busy world always gets in the way of getting the work done. So who was taking on the busy world so that Daniel Sylvan Evans didn't have to? Who tended to his children, made the cup of tea he sipped on, cleaned his office, did his laundry, listened to him bemoan the frustration that comes with trying to write and publish? Well, we don't actually have to guess at that, because he told his friend in 1901, and his friend wrote it in the newspaper. Referring to his late wife, Daniel Sylvan Evans said that her death 10 years ago was the greatest loss that he had ever sustained. Before her death, he simply had to attend to his ministerial and literary work, and she did everything else. These men who lived lives of solitary scholarly pursuit in the past were only able to because of all of the work that women and servants did around them. And all that work often gets completely erased in how we remember the accomplishments of these so-called great men. The wife of Daniel Sylvan Evans was named Margaret Walters. She was born in 1828 in the rural parish of Pencarig to a well-off family in the dairy business. We don't really know much about her life until 1846 when she married Daniel Sylvan Evans. At that time, Daniel Sylvan Evans was still a student at St. David's College in Lampeter. Margaret probably met her husband through her brothers, who both attended college to also become Anglican ministers. Margaret was a literate and very intelligent woman herself, and later in life she attended and participated in the Eistedd Vodai. She passed away at the age of 61 in 1889 in a tragic carriage accident, and newspapers across Wales published obituaries describing her life. The Bygones Journal wrote that she helped Canon Evans in his literary and other labors, and was greatly esteemed by all who knew her. The Aberystwyth Observer wrote that she was the best of wives and was a great help to her husband in his literary work, besides being an affectionate and exemplary mother. So she not only was carrying out all of the household duties along with the servants that they employed, but there are hints here that she was actually contributing to his literary work herself. But that's not the full story. We can ask, what did that help actually look like? Was she just being a supportive wife, or was it more than that? 
Well, we get hints in the historic journals of how she helped another scholar, a Professor Rees, who presented on Welsh holy wills at an 1893 Cymbrodorion Society meeting. Professor Rees said that in 1887, the late Miss Sylvan Evans, who always took a keen interest in Welsh antiquities and folklore, told him how she had some 20 years previously visited Finon Elian in Denbyshire, and how her attention was directed to some bushes near the well, which once had been covered with bits of rags left by those who frequented it. An old woman of 70 told her that the rags used to be tied to the bushes with wool. Miss Evans also noticed corks with pins stuck in them, floating in the well, and her informant remembered many more in years gone by, for St. Elian's well was once in great repute as a finon rebio, or a well to which people resorted for the purpose of bewitching those whom they hated. Professor Rees shows us that Margaret was actually supplying him with the knowledge of Welsh folklore that she collected as she traveled the country and spoke to elders. The knowledge that she collected was being written into presentations, papers, and books. She was a contributor to these scholarly works, just her name wasn't being written into the author line on the book covers. And that brings us back to the first Welsh dictionary. Around the time the dictionary was being written, Margaret was doing all the household work so her husband didn't have to think about anything other than his writing. She was also helping him in his scholarly work, and she was supplying at least one other scholar with the knowledge necessary to write and further his own career. How much did she contribute to the writing of the first Welsh dictionary? In all honesty, we may never know. But we can certainly say that the first Welsh dictionary wouldn't have been written when it was without Margaret Walter's Sylvan Evans. Let's end on part of a poem dedicated to Margaret after her passing. One who in blameless innocence of life along the world's bewildering path could roam, the fondest mother and the sweetest wife that ever blessed a home. The poor lament a true and generous friend, the sick a comforter and all a guide, before whose gentleness crabbed age would bend, in whom the young confide. She was a mother, a wife, a friend, a guide, a confidant, a scholar. Thanks for watching Genial Cymru. I hope you enjoyed, and here's a bonus for anyone who's listened all the way to the end. Margaret Walters is actually the great-niece of my six-times great-grandfather, John Walters. So that's how I ended up looking into this story. And it just goes to show the amazing places family history research can take you. Anyway, thanks for watching, and make sure to like, comment, and subscribe.